Hey guys, it's been a little while since I put out a video and really wanted to put one out today. Um, just in regards to living expenses and the Wagyu and Shiraz, um, fairly high, high profile case that's been in the news recently. Very quick video, so I'm not going to have time to go through all of it, but I do want to touch on um, what it means for living expenses essentially. So uh, it's between ASIC and uh, ASIC were taking Westpac to court. Uh, and one of the issues they, they had was in regards to um, Westpac not assessing um, uh, current, current spending levels correctly in their eyes. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, obviously responsible lending is extremely important and I'm not playing that down in any way. And, and certainly the, the um, justices, as, justices weren't either uh, in, in terms of handing down their decision. Um, so the original justice to hand down the actual decision uh, was Justice Nye Perham. Now, one of the things that he said in, in handing it down was, um, I may eat Wagyu beef every day, washed down with the finest Shiraz, but if I really want my new home, I can make do on much more modest fare. Uh, so this is, this is what he wrote uh, in his decision. Uh, modest fare being more modest food, essentially. Anyway, um, very judgy wording. Um, and so ASIC then uh, basically uh, appealed this case and it was uh, heard again in the, uh, the, the federal court uh, and the federal court dismissed the case uh, and upheld the original decision in favour of uh, Westpac. Uh, so essentially the only other thing that I, I, I guess I wanted to talk about there was when it comes to expenses, some are discretionary now, like that Wagyu and Shiraz, that may not continue after the loan is in place. Now, um, what this case has probably further um, uh, extenuated in the lending um, kind of spectrum at the moment is lenders, I mean, after seeing this case, lenders certainly now, uh, where they were before as well, will use different levels of assessment in terms of how they assess living expenses, which they're able to do anyway. Uh, and so th this, this case certainly, um, uh, confirms that and really cements that decision. Now, some lenders will say, okay, well, your level of spending in your bank statements is this, and you've said that your spending is here, so less than that, uh, in terms of what you believe your normal spending. We don't care. Whatever was in the statement, that's what we're going to take. That's what we're going to assess by. Now, some lenders will say, hey, we don't even really need a statement, um, or you give us a statement, but we're not even actually going to look at it uh, unless it's a, a fairly risky loan or that sort of thing, we're gonna take your word on uh, in terms of what you're talking about, your, your budget there. Um, <clears throat> so there are different lenders who will look at things in different ways. And ultimately it comes down to the question of, are we talking about a discretionary expense? So once you get the loan, hey, you know what, that was discretionary, I didn't need to spend that, so I'm not gonna be spending it anymore. So we can assume that I'm not gonna be spending it anymore when we actually um, apply for the loan. Because if I give you $10,000 a month, you're gonna spend more than if I give you $3,000 a month. You're probably gonna save more as well, but you will almost certainly save more. Uh, and, and this is what I, I guess Justice Perrin was uh, trying to make that, the point about, um, essentially. So um, so simply labeling an expenditure expense as declared a living expense, and the fact that the consumer incurs that expense on the current lifestyle does not necessarily change its nature from being discretionary uh, Justice Lee wrote, which obviously makes um, a good point. Uh, it's plain that a consumer may choose to and can be expected to forgo particular living expenses in order to meet their financial obligations under a credit contract. Um, so it's quite important um, when we're talking about uh, discretionary expenses, living expenses, that sort of thing. Obviously, we want to be very careful. We don't want to put anyone in a bad position. But we, it is very important to choose a lender who will actually work with how your expenses have been set up over the last couple of months. And certainly in the last few months, we've seen um, a high level of discretionary expenses, high level of discretionary spending on toilet paper um, by some people, for example. But okay, is that likely to continue? No, because they've got toilet paper for the next 20 years. So they don't need to spend it anymore. Same with Wagyu Shiraz, same with a lot of things. Now there are expenses that are not discretionary, so non-discretionary expenses. One would be something like um, I mean, ultimately, most things are discretionary, but something like um, private schooling, that is very much seen as a non-discretionary um, expense because even though you could send that person to a public school, 
you are highly, highly likely not to. Uh, and so could that potentially sometimes be seen as discretionary if it was locked? Potentially a lender might be okay with it. Um, but in, in terms of when we're talking about non-discretionary, that, that's really that kind of other end of the spectrum. Um, and certainly probably a lot of people that I see, that's, that's probably an issue that really causes um, real living expenses to be um, higher than the ability to, to kind of get the loan that that person might necessarily want. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about that. Um, basically, it's important lender choice around those expenses, especially if you've had a time of um, higher expenses, basically, than normal.